guys, Dawson Shively here with Concept Agritech, and I'm sitting here with Drew and Kurt Greenwell here at uh, Bluegrass Ag in Morganville, Kentucky. And uh, we're currently talking to the newest Kentucky high soybean record holders here. Um, you guys kind of want to go into detail about what all kind of went about, how that was all set up? Yeah, so we, we started the year out uh, trying to figure out how we can grow high yielding soybeans. Uh, of course, our family's been been growing good soybeans for several years now, but we're trying to figure out how to push that to the next to the next level. Uh, and we we've teamed up with Concept as dealers and using their products to achieve that. Uh, so starting starting with planting and stuff, you know, we we did a lot of planting before the season started, um, just trying to, to figure out what products will get us where. Well, I think first we should say that the yield was 122 bushel. Um, it's a uh, pretty proud of that feat. Um, we've we've broke the 100 bushel barrier in the state of Kentucky now for I think this will be the fourth year um, in the last six years I think. So so we've been we've been on this road of of how do we raise high yielding soybeans. Um, and this was the first year that we thought we really want to push it to the next level. Um, we've been concept dealers for for quite a while now, but you know this year we really kind of took that program that we've been developing over all that time um, and really took it to a new level. And you know we teamed up with Dawson and uh, to really get in depth and look at different timings. Um, and really look at that whole system approach to growing a soybean crop. This was by no means an overnight success story. We did this is the first year we've just came in and said, "Maybe we're gonna grow 120, bu 120 bushel soybeans." This this took several years of work. I mean, it took us a long time to get the soils in in the right condition, and really looking at soil tests and really you know playing around with different shots at different staging times and different products. That, it took us a long time to really dial this in, but we. Um, by no means content with this. We're going to keep keep trying to raise that that level and those bushels. But this was just kind of going to say that you know we're we're a system approach. We're not just uh, throw one product out here and one there, and you're going to get 100 bushel soybeans. It it takes a while to really grow your soils and get to where you need them to be and be you know as affordable and economic as we can possibly be. And at the end of the day, we still want ROI on these. We're not just going out there and you know trying to lose money off these just to have a record. We want to still make money doing these type of plots. So um, something very big and, you know, like they said, we're, we're starting from before we even think about rolling a planter in there. I mean, we're going with seed treatments and population and picking the right varieties, the right, right soil. Um, if you guys kind of want to go in more detail about how that all went about, what you guys' thought processes were. Yeah, so we've, we've been soil testing now for a long time. And, and each time, each year, we try to build on that test and try to see what, you know, what can we add? What, do, where do we need to get? And the concept has played a big part in that. You know, they, they've helped us go through those soil tests every year, and um, you know, it's kind of part of the program, right? You know, it's, it's kind of what we do as a business. It's what they do as a business, not just with us, with with all their growers. And um, so I, that's where it all starts. Because even in soybeans, I think it's very important that we. We gotta have the we gotta have the soil right and in from the beginning, and then um, so next um, starting with the right hybrid so or the right variety. So you gotta pick the right variety for the soil that you're on. Um, so that plays a big part in it. And then we move into you know seed treatment. We look at seed treatment as it's a big deal. So you know we're treating all of our beans with with a fungicide and an insecticide, um, and we're also treating with a bunch of bugs. Um, especially on the high yield stuff, and then, um, and, and we're also trying to protect from sudden death, you know, because we're really trying to push that envelope on early planting, and uh, so anytime we're, we, we do see the advantage of planting early, but that also comes with some risk, right? So, so we're trying to protect that risk um, by using the seed treatment. To, to get us through that stage. Yeah, so as we move into planting, you know, we, we, we got to figure out what population is going to be best for the highest yielding soybeans. Um, we've been backing our populations down for, for several years now, 
and on the standard acre, we're, we're playing a lot of 130,000 population. Uh, with this high yield soybean check that we decided, we decided to drop them at 100,000. Uh, and I think whenever whenever we got, after after we planted, I think we had 80,000 final stand. And 80,000 was the goal. I mean, that's that was kind of our minimum. That's where we, we thought we had to be uh, to get to the number we wanted. So yeah, we, we were out there evaluating stands. Uh, had some residue. We had some issues in the field. We, we it didn't look perfect for early on. I mean, we was we was worried that we had we had dropped them too low and we didn't have enough. Uh, <laughs> kind of a funny. Just one one of our employees. I think when we first took him to the field and told him that we were going to set a new state record in this field, he he kind of gave us a funny look, like we were crazy. So we had a pretty tough May here. Um, you know, I think we got almost 20 inches of rain. Uh, on that field in May, so you know, adding some of those products helped. I, I think helped with the stress mitigation there, um, because those beans were definitely stressed in the month of May. Well, after we got, you know, first first post pass, um, we we shifted gears a little bit. Um, you know, our, our typical our typical program is to hit the beans at that R3 stage with fungicide and a foliar pass. Um, we shifted gears a little bit this time and decided we were gonna go with, we were gonna split it. So we were gonna go with an R1 and an R4 pass. So so we added a pass there, um, to, you know, to try to help boost what we were gonna do. Yeah, and our whole thought process was behind that whole thing is let's stick as many blooms and flowers as we possibly can and then come back with that R5 shot really fill those paws out as much as possible. Um, and I think, you know, that made a big, big difference this year. Like I said, that's something we've been playing around with for a couple of years, and this was something that <laughs> it, it paid a big dividend this year. You know, I, th I think, you know, we've learned a lot in corn, uh, especially in Greenfield. You know, I think a lot of our yield in corn has come from Greenfield. And, and we found that out with some of these new modern hybrids. And so we, we tried to shift gears a little bit and try to think about that same approach in soybeans. Um, so in soybeans, you know, a lot of times, you know, we're trying to protect the pods and protect the blooms, you know, but then we were kind of walking away from them at that point and we weren't really thinking about seed field, grain field. Um, you know, a lot of times if you're making that R3 pass um, somewhere in the first two weeks of July, and the combine's not hitting them until September. So, you know, we were going almost two months uh, walking away from those beans and expecting them to do big things. And, and that might be some of the, in my opinion, it could be some of the most influential time, uh, especially on seed size, and, and finish them off uh, kind of like the corn. I, you know, I think we protect seed size and we get a lot of our, our yield from the girth. So we were trying to implement that same philosophy into beans and to produce some bigger beans. And that's that's one thing about the high yield plot is we, you know we're, we're throwing a lot of stuff at different stages in the high yield uh, but we're trying to, to, to learn from that and what can we do on a broad acre after the fact and we actually took some of those tests and individualized them in a different field uh, with the different passes so that we can try to learn uh, what passes are paying off. And we actually seen incredible benefit out of the late R4, R4 R5 pass. Um, so we're, we're excited that that might be something that's new uh, that we can continue to do on, on big acres. Uh, but we still got to test that. We, 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 we've got a drone and that allows us to do those extra passes in season. Um, we're going to continue to learn and try to pass on that information to our growers. We're sitting here talking about high yield soybeans and corn and something big that would play a big role in that is once we get the combine out and we cut these big numbers, let's, let's start thinking about these residue management out there. Um, you know, we got something that when we're looking at where dry prices are and the economy as a whole, it's, let's use as much nutrients as we can out of those stocks that are still left and the residue that's out there. Let's try and break that down and let the soil be able to take that up a lot easier and more efficient. Um, so that'd be something that we are really looking into add into next year. You know, we're talking about spending eight to nine bucks, but saving you a hundred to two hundred dollars on fertilizer later the next year. So, 
you know, this is something we're really, really looking at dialing in and really doing more and more trials with this, but just something to consider. So thank you all, and feel free to look us up online or give us a call at conceptagritech.com.